Okay, guys, here we are at day three of Gamescom. As you can see, the public is absolutely ready to come in. Uh, they're dying to get their hands on everything in there that we've uh, seen some of. We've got Sonic over here guarding the way. Fastest Hedgehog alive, ready to uh, race the crowds. Um, there's just absolutely thousands of guys here. It's going to be one heck of a day. Here we go, okay. Countdowns. Oh. A bit of an anticlimax, but I think they're about to come through. Hey, here we go. That guy is loving it. guys, we're here at EA and we're going to be speaking to Patrick Bark and hopefully we're going to get some exclusive information about Battlefield 4. I cannot comment on that. <laughs> oh, uh, right, okay. Well, we've still got Crisis 3 and Medal of Honor Warfighter to see. We saw in the EA press conference uh, the new multiplayer hunter mode. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Uh, just kind of give us a, a rough overview? Yep. So, it's an uh, interesting mode because it's, it starts out asymmetrical. There's two hunters on one side who've shut down this little VTOL transport ship that has some self troopers inside it, and that is in essence the setup. So it's basically up to these two guys to make sure that all the cell guys get eliminated before the time runs down, which is the evacuation. And every time one of the cell troopers gets killed, he will be respawned as a hunter, which means that this balance will kind of tip over time, making it harder and harder and harder to stay alive as a cell trooper. Also, of course, I want you one more XP, uh, the longer you're able to do it. Don't let the hunters swarm yet. So we're here um, in the EA booth with uh, Greg from Danger Close talking about Medal of Honor Warfighter. I have a beard, you have a beard. In Medal of Honor we saw some great beards. More beards in... in yeah, definitely some beards. Yeah, beard is beard is back. You know, it's, it's funny. Um, last year, our last game con I came to with Metal Honor 2010, I had a a massive beard, and we were we were growing them for charity, and we raised a, a good amount of money for charity. And uh, my wife this year said, "Look, we'll just I'll, we'll pay the money. Just don't grow the beard, you know, because it, it got really nasty." Well, thank you very much, Greg. It's yeah. been awesome talking to you. Thanks very much. Cheers. We are here with uh, Megan from Crystal Dynamics talking about Tomb Raider. Um, Megan, working on Tomb Raider, there's a lot of uh, women working on the project. Rhiannon Pratchett is writing. Um, how's that in impacted with such a, a strong female character? Do you think that that's helped having such a big female element to the team? Absolutely. I mean, I think it's fantastic that we have not only Rihanna, um, but we also have you know women devs on the team. They they may you know they're at work hard at their desk. They're maybe not so much in the spotlight, but I think that everything from you know having insights into animation and how to animating a female to to writing one, it, it, it's great. There's a big element of survival in this, in, in, in Tomb Raider. It's very different to the old games where it was a case of you would kill tigers, feel guilty about it, and that was the end of it. You felt um, guilty? Well, I, I'm excited I, about like, the tigers. <laughs> species and exactly. All. What's the differences here between the old game survival and this kind of survival? Well, we definitely want to keep what made Tomb Raider great in 1996 in the game. And uh, some of that has to do with Lara and obviously what makes her special. The other part is the three core pillars that is, you know, made Tomb Raider great. So those are going to be the combat, the traversal and exploration, and then the puzzle solving. So those are still all very much present in the game, but what we're doing is we're reimagining them with that lens of survival. Um, and it's more of like a desperate, instinctual kind of primitive, um, you know, just need to keep breathing, so that that's what motivates Lara. Those core pillars are still there, it's just through that lens of survival.
Okay, guys, we're going to split up again. Uh, I'm heading off to go see Tekken Tag 2, and Rob is going to go see Epic Mickey 2. Yeah. And we're going to get going uh, anytime now. Yep. Anytime now, we're going to go. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go, Rob. Yeah, let's go. Let's you go. You first. Okay, we're here with uh, Nam Kabale and Harada san talking uh, Tekken Tag Tournament 2. Thank you very much for speaking to us, Harada san um, With Tekken Tag, uh, one of the things we wanted to ask you is if you could have anybody in the world as your tag team partner, who would you uh, like to have? If we're talking about real life, I would choose Bruce Campbell. He's very good at killing zombies, which makes him a very good partner to have. There's a lot of uh, the new bikini mode with the swimsuit. What kind of which, what kind of swimwear do you prefer, Harada san? Do you prefer the tight trunks or the long trunks? Maybe one suit? <laughs> I prefer the traditional Japanese fundoshi, just a cloth that wraps nicely around your privates. By the way, I'm not wearing any pants. <laughs> just kidding, just, just kidding, just kidding. Just kidding. Um, and finally, uh, Heihachi, he's, he's younger in the new game. Yeah. If you had to create a dating profile for a dating website, what would you, what would Heihachi say about himself? Well, he's very powerful and has lots of money, so his profile would be perfect apart from his personality. Seeing as he's surrounded by violent people, I think he'd be looking for an easy-going woman. So we're here with Warren from Disney, and we're here to talk about Epic Mickey 2. So Warren, thanks very much for talking to us. Um, first of all, this is the first time uh, Epic Mickey series has been on PS3. So what can PlayStation gamers look forward to with this title? Well, I, I, for one thing, I hope they can look forward to the same things that, that we've always tried to deliver, which is a, a player-driven experience. It's about you telling your story, uh, playing as Mickey Mouse or, or playing as Oswald in a two-player co-op mode, uh, and um, solving problems the way you want, just like you did in Deus Ex and the other games I've worked on over the years. What are the perks of working for Disney? It must be a pretty cool place to work. Oh, it's amazing. I mean, Disney is... Uh, from a creative standpoint, it's just such an amazing place. The level of talent there, uh, and th this feeling that you're part of something bigger than yourself—it's—it's it's hard to describe. But it, when you when you first walk onto the the studio lot in Burbank, uh, and you realize that that's where Mary Poppins was filmed, and oh my gosh, that used to be Walt Disney's office, and this is where all those movies you you. Uh, uh, you loved when you were growing up were made. You know, this holy cow, that guy's in a pirate costume because they're shooting some stuff for Pirates of the Caribbean over there on that side. You know, it's it really is uh, amazing that sense of we're on a mission, we're here together, we work for Disney. It's it's pretty crazy. Has any Disney movie ever made you cry? Like I always cry at The Lion King. Dude, every Disney movie makes me cry. Are you kidding? That's why, like at, at the end of the first game, there, you know, when we when we watched the end game cinematic for the first time with the the sound in, with the music, I I I mean, I started crying. I mean, I I, I have to admit it. I mean, and and I just looked over at my studio director and I said, you know, we didn't do Disney-ish. We just did Disney. Can you tell us that's new for Gamescom about F1 2012? Uh, three key things really. First of all, um, we're trying to educate the players to how to drive the car. So in real life there's something called a young driver's test which takes place at the end of every uh, F1 season or towards the end of every F1 season. So we thought perfect opportunity to incorporate something that happens in real life into our authentic game and actually teach players how to get the most out of the game. And, uh, second big thing is really trying to cater for people that haven't got as much time as they used to have to play games. What we've given you is something called Season Challenge Mode, which condenses the career mode into a 10 race season with five laps, including a little mode called One Shot Qualifying, which is a flying lap to set your best kind of uh, lap of the day. And the third mode really for those guys is um, something called Champions Mode. There's six world champions on the grid this season in F1 2012. You've got the likes of Vettel in there, Kimi Raikkonen's come back, you've got Michael Schumacher. So we thought it'd be nice to build some scenarios 
around those particular drivers. So it's something that you can just dip into and play for a while. Fantastic, sounds great. Any crazy DLC in the plan? Maybe Maldonado gets some tyre spikes or something like that to help him? Maldonado comes up a lot of conversation these days. <laughs> He's really making a name for himself, isn't he? We're not doing DLC this year. It's our long-term plan and what we've always wanted to do, and we're still fighting to do that now. We're getting closer, is to do historic content. And, and, that, and that is on the cards for us. We're really pushing at Codemasters to do historic DLC. One of the big changes this year is not a, um, DLC content, but we are releasing a demo this year. So for 10 and 11, we didn't do that. And I think you almost have to be sure that you wanted to purchase Formula 1. So if we're trying to attract those gamers who have been unsure in the past, then it's not just me that they're going to listen to during these interviews. I'm always going to be giving you the, the positive press, but you can actually play this now. So you can play it for free. You can try the demo out. It's the day one of the Young Drivers Test. It's the first race in um, Season Challenge. So if you like that, you're going to buy the, the full game. The hardcore can try it. The guy just outside the periphery can try it as well. So looking forward to that. So my name is David Cage, I'm the writer and director of uh, Beyond and before that Heavy Rain. So glad to have you here. After We've just come out of a panel for Beyond and it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, David Cage was giving us a, an example of the performance capture with Ellen Page. We got to see some gameplay footage and I'm really, really excited about this game. We're going to try and grab David Cage for a quick Q&A. First question, how hard was it to convince Ellen to come and work on the video game? Actually, it was quite easy because we, um, honestly, we just sent her the script and a copy of Heavy Rain and a nice letter saying, please, please accept to be a part of this because because you would be fantastic in the role. And the agent came back to us very quickly saying, okay, Ellen read the script, she loved it and she would love to be a part of this. So we organized a meeting in LA and we talked about the, the role about the character about about the story and, and how all this thing would work and it was as simple as that now when Ellen first had first day on on in the studio with you uh, you've sat her down you've explained the process to her was you feeling a little nervous or how, how are you feeling at that point <laughs> I was feeling incredibly nervous <laughs> because it was about scheduling a very long shooting session with Ellen and where we had really a lot to shoot in a very limited time and I was also nervous because it's it was the first time doing something like this it was the it was something very challenging for for her and for for us so we all wanted everything to go smoothly and yeah we were definitely all very nervous but we forgot about all this thing very quickly because because we went into work and things went very smoothly and very quickly and she was absolutely amazing on stage and she really blew me away pretty much every day I mean she was just amazing and fantastic and incredibly talented incredibly professional and um, perfect fit for, for the role so I'm a happy director the end of Gamescom. It's been hard, but it's definitely been worthwhile. I've gotten to meet some fantastic people and play some great games. But, you know, my feet hurt, my back aches, it's really been quite tough. I suppose the PlayStation Access guys have worked hard too. But still, it's time for me to head home. So, I'll see you next time.